pointed to an interesting theory proposed by Lee Smolin called cosmological natural selection as a possible naturalistic way of explaining fine tuning. And so I think it's worthy of some discussion because Lee Smolin is a top physicist, has a PhD in physics from Harvard, was a, the head of the Perimeter Institute in Canada for many years. So let's talk a little bit about Smolin. And first of all, I think it's important to realize that he does very much affirm that the universe is finely tuned for life, even though he certainly doesn't opt for theism as an explanation of that. He also happens to be skeptical of this kind of anthropic multiverse explanation for the fine tuning. So what he wanted to do was come up with a theory that's purely naturalistic, but which would be far more testable than these multiverse theories, which he criticizes because often they're outside of the empirical domain and arguably for him, he may say that, that should not even really be considered science. Because in most ver versions of multiverse theories, these other universes are causally disconnected from our own universe. And therefore, even in principle, we could never get an empirical observation or confirmation of those theories. So what Smolin proposed was the possibility that black holes might spawn new universes that would have varying constants of nature and then those that produce more black holes, if you had certain constants, certain configurations and the new physics of a baby universe, that might result in more baby universes being produced in the next generation. So you end up getting sort of a biological natural selection analogous effect from it. So it's a brilliant idea. It's very fascinating to think through, but I think for those who would appeal to this as a means for removing the need for fine tuning, there's room for caution here. It has received a lot more attention in the online, among the online skeptical community than it has from the physics community. And I think partly because of Richard Dawkins citing this in chapter four of The God Delusion, which of course is a very popular book and so many people have latched onto that, but I think it's worthy of some additional exploration. So let's talk about a reaction from a top physicist about this. Uh, Stanford physicist Leonard Susskind, he's a father of string theory, or some would say the father of string theory, and he's weighed in on this. He said over the last decade, since Smolin put forward his clever idea, the black hole controversy has largely been resolved. The consensus is that black holes do not lose any information and thus couldn't spawn a baby universe. He then cites some of the more influential papers affirming this understanding of black holes and notes there's about 6,000 citations to these articles and then he contrasts that with saying that the, he found there were only 11 citations to Lee Smolin's paper. And he said that four of those were actually by Smolin and two of the sightings were actually very critical of the idea. So there's not been a lot of physicists kind of interact with this and try to further it as some kind of viable theory. Uh, from the beginning, it should be pointed out that this new proposed physical mechanism to spawn a universe from a black hole it was quite speculative. And so now with this latest findings uh, related to black holes and information loss, it seems that we have good reason to think that it's actually not possible to spawn a baby universe um, from a black hole. Another problem that this theory has had from the beginning is that what it's really optimizing for in this natural selection is not life, but rather it's optimizing for black hole production because those are going to be the universes that produce more offspring. The more black holes you have, the more you're going to have things that can produce other universes. And so there is this, con this conflict, this tension then though between black holes and life, which seems a bit surprising because trust me, you don't want to be too close to a black hole. You might say it, it would suck. Okay, it, uh, unlike the interstellar movie where they propose that it's maybe possible, I think there's a lot of reason for thinking that it's not a good place to, uh, for life due to the intense radiation and, and other factors. In fact, the most extreme degree of fine tuning is required to minimize black hole production to a life permitting level. Oxford physicist Roger Penrose first quantified this effect by showing that almost all initial conditions coming out of the Big Bang would have produced a universe so dominated by black holes that he said there would be no life possible in our universe. And he put this at one part in 10 to the power of 10 to the 
power of 123, which is an extraordinarily uh, low probability, he pointed out that if you were to try to write a zero for every subatomic particle in the universe, you wouldn't have enough subatomic particles just to write the number in standard ordinal notation. And he also cited that the multiverse is worse than useless for explaining this fine tuning. So I think that there's multiple reasons for being skeptical that Smolin's cosmological natural selection theory could ever explain the fine tuning. And it seems to be, although a very clever idea, it seems to be one which is very much disfavored among the physics community.